JerseySports.com's original multimedia series talking all things wrestling across North Jersey. This is Season 8, Episode 10, our penultimate edition of The Wrestling Show. I am Corey Doviak, being joined by my illustrious panel of North Jersey wrestling insiders, starting with the one, the only, the Kenny Sarajan. What's going on, Kenny? Exciting! So a lot of great regional matches this weekend. I know we got uh, Ryan and Donnie and Tommy on to talk about what they saw, and then we got Gary Mezzacupa, whatever his name is. <laughs> <laughs> so I got the rest of the state. Go, ahead, go on. Yes, we got the oh colorful, colorful Gary Mezzacupa will be joining us later on in the show to broaden our horizons to a statewide level here as we preview the upcoming Atlantic City State Tournament this weekend. But I want to get to this next uh, introduction first, and I'm skipping around here because I know he was short-shrifted by Kenny's sausage and pepper story this week. So joining us, as usual, is the North Bergen assistant coach, Ryan Burdett. Ryan, do you like the way I snuck you in early this week? Yeah, that's it. I'm moving up. I feel, I feel uh, honored. Yes, Next up, we have the great yeah, head coach. You'll be, you'll be in the Ricky chair before you know it. <laughs> <laughs> we are not allowed to say that. Donnie, you just broke the cardinal rule of uh, the wrestling show. Rick Babbitt. It's okay. He's Pope. He can break cardinal rules. <laughs> That's true. All right, so let's do it next. He is the Pope of Bergen County Wrestling. He is the assistant coach of the Bergen Catholic Crusaders, who sent 13 through the regions and down to Atlantic City. He is the great... Donnie Spataro, and he's playing hurt this week. So, Donnie, we appreciate your presence back in your rightful place on the wrestling show. Gentlemen, it's been real. <laughs> How you feeling, pal? I'm all right, hanging in there. Got and through the regions, and uh, we got to get through the states next weekend. Yes. It's going to be a long weekend. Another guy in the same predicament, maybe with a few less wrestlers, is the head coach of the Pascac Valley wrestling team. He is Tom Gallion. What's up, Tommy? What's going on, Corey? Good to be back. It's nice to have you back. Three wrestlers through for the Indians, and I think we should start there, Kenny, because we are going to get into all of this state stuff. We're going to talk about the way the states are seated, which I think is an important public service to our listenership so they have a better idea of why, who is seated where they are. Uh, We'll get some clarification on that with our rules guru, Donnie Spataro. But I think first we should take a quick peek back at the regions because if you made it through there, it is a great accomplishment. Kenny, who do you want to start with? Let's go with Ryan first because... We got, you know, he deserves it. He's been a good sport with us, and it's been a great addition. So, Ryan, here's the quick question. Tell us, you know, out at your region, Region 3, who do you, you know, what were the highlight matches, and who do the guys you see as being the guys who can make the most noise down in Atlantic City? Uh, Really, there's only two places to go here. Um, You know, there's a lot to talk about, but you know what? They deserve uh, to be mentioned the most. And uh, that's 126, Pat Glory, number one in the nation. Um, he, he re- And this is no uh, knock on any of the other kids in 126, but he looks like a college wrestler wrestling high school kids. Um, he's dominant. He basically does what he wants. He's incredible hand control. Um, you know, that's why he's number one in the nation, I guess, right? But uh, And then the other guy is uh, Nick Ramo at 132 from Hanover Park, which as a team looked phenomenal this weekend, and so did Glory's team, Del Barton. Um, Nick Ramo. Uh, he scored 67 points in three matches, and that's not a math mistake. Uh, 67 points in three matches uh, on his way to the title. Three tech falls, um, 20 points, 21, and 26. So that was pretty incredible. And if we're talking about growing the sport, I would say uh, we should skip all this and go right to a super match. Nick Ramo versus Pat Glory. Should have done that at Regents. Should definitely do that at State. Wow. Yeah. Let me ask you another question. Who's who's the person, you know, there out of your region that people should watch that could be a dark horse and, and make some noise down there? I mean, you got, obviously, you just hit the two high points, but 
what who else should we be looking at that you really like and what match did you really enjoy in your finals um really uh you know in the in the finals kind of staying the same way as just watching Ramo wrestle i mean he's just super fast super impressive always knows what he wants to do and when something doesn't work he's on to the next move um so you know you knew what you knew what to expect going in with him but he was a lot of fun um a guy that probably a lot of people i wouldn't say don't know but he's you know he's just uh, that name that uh seems to never get the credit he deserves i would say brian meyer from uh, peabird um he's a number two seed at 52 and um i think he's gotten uh, faster i think he's gotten in better shape and i think he's you know ready to impress down at the uh, States um, among some other guys from Hanover Park like Oliveri which we'll talk about later in the show yep and how about just uh, give us an update on Northburg and how many did you get through and who are they we got two down we got a uh, freshman Justin Cantor took third and uh, junior Nick Hunt took uh, fourth at uh, heavyweight that's good so you got a place to spend the weekend and uh, a reason and a rooting interest that's always good for you there, yeah, and just out, out of curiosity, I mean, when, when you does, does everybody in the gym, you know, the all head turn, all heads turn, obviously when when Glory takes the mat. I mean, the people obviously know what they're watching when a kid like that gets out there. Yeah, I mean, there was that one point where Glory almost gave up a reversal, and you would have thought that it was the state finals and he was on his back <laughs> because uh, you know that was the kind of reaction you got. Yeah, um, I believe it was in it was against the John Cumming from Del Barton, who actually wrestled Glory pretty tough for the first two minutes to the point where people were like, "Oh, look at this match!" And then that kind of went haywire after after you know the first two minutes. Yep. So, but uh, yeah, it was interesting. Yep, and you know everybody we said it with Soriano all those years, and and uh, you know Ash Nolte before that, like, oh, I saw that kid when he was in high school. So that's one of those moments too. It's pretty cool, Kenny. Where are we going? Let's go to Donnie. Donnie, yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Wait, right. first check to see if he's throw. snoring. Yeah, 13th row. I mean, it's a, it's an amazing accomplishment. It's probably uh, definitely a state record. I mean, what? it's tough because you're the coach there, so I don't want to put you on the spot. What was the best final? I mean, we know O'Malley Folka ended up this time in a pin in round two. Other than that one, what well, final? I'll tell you what, before before that happened, it was a really good match. It just, uh, you know, once Chris gets to the mat, he's a, he's more of a mat wrestler. And o, o, O'Malley was riding a real tight core ride on him and and turned him. But uh, before that, it was a it's a pretty good match going on. So we'll see if we'll get round three and the states going. Yep. With that. Uh, I mean, the d- district, there were, you know, there were a couple good matches in the finals. I mean, uh, some overtimes. I mean, Wade Unger got taken down with, I think, one less than one second left instead of going into overtime with uh, with Cabanillas at 145. Uh, mm-hmm. Even the 126-pound uh, uh, match was a good match with the other Cabanillas brother versus uh, Dylan Weaver. And... Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the, the, there were some good good matches in our district. Our district's usually pretty strong. I'm, I'm sorry, region. region. You mean your district, region? Yeah, our region's pretty strong. It was like uh, I think we had 20 state medal winners coming out of the region last year, and uh, and it was pretty equal last year. So you had you had 10 medals were from non-public schools and 10 medals were from public schools. So it was a, a pretty pretty even run. You know, with in terms of competition last year, I'm dying to see what happens this year. Because I think that you know our region can produce uh, a decent amount of medals again this year. Donnie, just take it. I'm not asking you to to pick your favorite wrestler from the Bergen Catholic contingent that made it down to Atlantic City. But if we rewind to the beginning of the season, is there one kid who has come the furthest? Where maybe at you know uh, when you first got in the wrestling room, where you didn't maybe project that kid to be making it down to Atlantic City, and uh, now he's there. Is there one? Or did put I put you too much? Side, yeah. No, no. I mean, you want to you want to be honest. We, well, we, well I mean, how about this? We, I mean, let's let's like, make it. It's like like Dan Gate, like Dan Gable. I expect ten national champs every year. We expect to take the team, the whole team. I'm yep. being honest. That's that's the way we think, and 
You know, I understand. understand. It, it, so I don't think anyone's ever done it in state history, and uh, you know, we came we came pretty close this year. So, I mean, that that's the way we think. We're going to every king, every kid is going down to states. Okay. So, I mean, I we came, we came pretty close. So, Donnie, I understand that, respect that, but let's talk about. Um, I guess you're 13 pounder. You want? You want? Well, I'll tell you. I'll, I'll give you one kid who's come a long way. Who, as Dave even mentioned one time in an article, could barely win a JV match a couple of years ago. It was the kid Sage Moscow. Uh, he's a kid. He's a kid that came out. Uh, you know, wasn't the greatest wrestler coming out. He, he he paid his dues, took his beating in the room. He was actually like uh, a little overweight chubby kid when he first came out and like one summer he just transformed himself he went to every tournament he could he went to every clinic he could he lost a lot of weight he hit the weight room and just uh transformed himself and 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 you know this year he's he's really a 95 pounder and uh you know with the with the event of josh mckenzie coming back out going 82 and and jacob cardenas moving up to 95 sage had to go up to, to 220 so he's a, he's like a 197 pound kid nationally going 220 and uh you know he had a real good shot of winning the regions he went made the region finals and uh i think he lost by one it was a pretty good match and i think he captured the sixth seed down there i think at 220 so i mean you know like you're asking who's come a long way there's there's an example of uh someone who has through our program yep and i, I, meant got, it. I got one other kid for you donnie that i i think paid his dues with you guys and, I, and it's a personal favorite of mine. I admit to that bias. But I'm really happy for Wade Unger. I mean, he, he battled through some illness and injuries over the years. And, he, you know, he had a tight match, like you said. He he was, you know, a couple seconds away from going to overtime with, you know, Cabinius. I can't even say his name. I'm just happy that he's he's, you know, reaching his potential with this opportunity, too. Yeah, I mean, uh... He kind of has. He kind of like mirrors. You know, Wade. Wade has had many injuries along the way. This, coming into the season after the region last year, he had both knees operated. One was an ACL uh, reconstructive surgery on one knee, and the other knee was a, a torn meniscus. So he had both knees done. Lost a lot of time over the summer this year. Couldn't really do anything rehabbing for all that time. So, you know, he's he's either had some type of injury, sickness. He's never wrestled the full season yet in, in his three years so far. Hopefully okay. next year he'll, you know, hopefully next year, his senior year, he'll be able to. But, uh, yeah, he, he, I mean, he came out as a herald wrestler, you know, out of the wreck and everything, but he's just had some bad luck along the way, some, you know, bad health, he's bad injury. And, you know, it's sometimes wrestling's a game of luck, too, so. Yep. All right. All right, let's move on to the beloved Pascack Valley Indians who are sending three down to Atlantic City. Tommy, I think that's the most, uh, I don't know about in school history, but the most in your tenure there. Uh, you know, add that to the state sectional championship, and this is really piling up to be uh, one of the best years in school history. So talk about it. Yeah, we're sending three down. Robbie Natelli at 120. He uh, placed third. Matt Byer at 138 placed second. And Tommy Cellini, um, won the region at 160 so it's nice like you said it's the most we've had since since i've been there it's nice that that all three are getting down um especially natelli you know funny fact actually mike and i were talking about yesterday at practice natelli was about 20 seconds away from getting knocked out in the quarterfinals of the district um and then he makes the region he was down seven three to the kid from high point the eighth seed from high point and uh he won eight seven and then you know ever since then that's got a little bit of a scare since then he's wrestled great so that was really nice uh accomplishment for the kid he got his 100th win in the third place match so for him it was a, a real special special moment um you know but it was it was a good weekend for, for those three guys no i did it to donnie so i gotta do it to you which one's your favorite kid <laughs> <laughs> uh, that uh, all right kenny <laughs> So now well, that... I got one more question okay, for sorry. Tommy. Not to forget, but talk about our region. I know I was very impressed with the kid at 195 uh, from uh, Pope Jake John, Brown. and I'm Brown. just Jake Brown. Jake Brown, I, I you know, I he was a he was a tough wrestler. I mean, of course, we had uh, Aragona, and we had Garcia gets upset by White McCarthy at uh, 45. 
So I, you know, if I look at the guys, great, had a great match between Trent Furman and, and Trevor Fleet in the final. Um, I mean, a, you know, competitive back oh, and forth. I'm full. And, oh no, uh, no, I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. Sorry. Um, that was a great match. You know, uh, could have gone either way. Um, yeah, Beard on and Babin again. You know, one nothing match. Um, you know, it's funny. You had, you had the kid Napoleon from from St. Joe's lose as the second seed on Friday night. You had Sammy Alvarez, who's a uh, returning state champ. He almost got got uh, knocked off on Friday night. He came about half a second away from getting taken down um, out of bounds. Um, so it, was, it was a questionable call. The refs met, and they decided that time uh, ran out before the takedown was awarded. And so that was it was almost an interesting start to the tournament. Um, you had a lot mm-hmm. of really good, really good matches um, with that re- in, in that you know uh, in the Region One tournament. Like Kenny said, Wyatt McCarthy and Garcia was a phenomenal ending um, to the region. Excellent match. Um, you know, one eighty-two pound weight class had a lot of you know Garrett Beam, returning state place winner, Mafaro, state wrestleback three. You know, uh, Muldoon from Pope John wrestleback three. Zach Lewis wrestleback three last year. So a deep weight class there as well. So there was a lot of a lot of really good matches. The heavyweight match was phenomenal in the finals. Um, so very very exciting region. And I'll say one thing: West Milford held the region this year for the first time, and they did a, a great job. They ran it on three mats um, the whole day. We ran the finals, the first place match, third place match, and fifth place match all at the same time, kind of like um, like they do in the Big Tens. And I mean, it was a lot of exciting matches. Uh, great atmosphere, and you know what? They, they got us out of there in reasonable time, and, and hopefully they uh, they're awarded the regions again next year because they did a great job. So a little shaky on the food. <laughs> food was very good. Hey, wait, hang on. The food was very good. Kenny just doesn't know that there's an app called Waze to use when you're driving. He was about two hours late to Saturday's round, so you know he got there on time. He would have gotten the better food, but let's we won't even go there. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you miss out on, Tom? I mean, what was gone by the time? What, what do you get? Yeah, ham, egg and cheese, yeah, ham, egg and cheese, sausage, oh. egg and cheese. Great breakfast sandwiches, but he was too busy driving in circles because he, you know, he can't open it out. <laughs> All right, you can let's take the boy out of Bergen wow, County, cool. but you can't take the Bergen County out of the boy. Kenny gets lost on the two in the Route Twenty Three corridor. All right, oh, God. All right, Kenny. So. Now we are on to the states. We are going to have Gary Mezzacapo on here shortly, who is going to give the breakdown of all breakdowns as to this state wrestling tournament this year. But before we get there, we got to talk about why, who is, you know, the the seeding process. Uh, There is a lot of chatter anywhere where you can talk about high school wrestling, about the ineptitude of the seeders, the... Uh, you know, nefariousness of the seeds, but this is all scientifically planned, and there is reason and, uh, you know, data behind it. So how do we proceed to explain the situation? Turn it over to Donnie. Donnie, help me. It's, 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 it's pretty simple. Years ago, they used to take the eight region champs, and they would seed them. Then they would take the runner-ups and they'd have to keep the runner-ups which I never understood why have to keep them away from the kids they wrestled in the region finals and sprinkle them in the, in the other brackets and then they would reseed again so they would seed the eight region champs separate them one through eight they'd put in the runner-ups in the opposite brackets of who they wrestled and then reseed the bracket again now since with the uh, weight class being uh, with 32 kids, all they're, what they're really doing now is they're seeding 1 through 24, and those are regions 1, uh, region champs, seconds, and thirds. So they seed 1 through 24, and then they take the fourths, and then they go 25 to 32 region fourths. So, I mean, it's as, it's as simple as that, but what people don't get is there's a pre-seed, and that, set, that sets up everything. Uh, that's based on past performance, basically just past performance pre-seeds. And what you do is, you know, so you, you go through the weight classes, who, who's had a medal, who's medaled twice, who's medaled three times, and you do the seating that way, and it goes all the way down to, like, how far you went in the States the previous years. And, again, we're always talking about, you know, how this sport pertains to what you did the previous years. Then, after you do the pre-seed based on what you did the previous years, and, uh, you know, 
then you can jump somebody. So, I mean, today we saw a kid who was the pre-seed, number one seed, because he had a third in the state last year. Because of one loss, he went from one to eight. So people don't realize that's the only way you can jump somebody right. is Tell in a pre-seed. So, so what they'll do is they'll say, the number one pre-seed is Jones. Did anyone beat Jones? And all of a sudden, maybe the kid that was like preceded seventh year, we beat Jones. Uh, Smith beat Jones, so Smith jumps up to one. Did anyone beat Smith? And then so on, and that's how you and that's how you really break it down. So you go head to heads, and then after that, everything else just plays out the way it is. So the only way you can jump somebody in a preseed is a head to head match. Donnie, okay. talk about what happened at I want to say one twenty with the triangle and the guy who had two state medals versus a defending champ. You want to run yeah, that one by, by that gives a good under, example of what can yeah, happen. People couldn't understand that. So you had Joe Mancio who won the States two years ago. And you have uh, Menino who won the States last year. They were all in the same weight class again. And uh, Robert Howard who took second to Menino. So last year you have Man- Mancio, the returning state champ, and loses to Robert Howard, I don't know if it was the quarters or the semis, and Mancho pl- placed only eighth last year. Robert Howard and Menino made it to the finals, and Menino beat him in a, in a really good, exciting match. So this year, the seeding comes along, and everyone would think that basically Menino would be the top seed. He's the returning state champ. But no, because Mancio won the states two years ago, and the medal last year, which gave him two medals over everyone else, and you know, like Robert Howard, you kind of get punished because, uh, in a way, he was only a freshman last year, so he can't have more than one medal. So the, when the pre-seeds came out, you have Mancio first, Menino second for taking uh, winning the states last year, and Robert Howard third. And a lot of people were confused by that, but you know, if, if you know how the seeding procedure goes, you would understand you know, how Mancio came up on top even though he took eighth in the state last year. He his medal still counts from two years ago when he won the states. So it's not so, arbitrary. You know, they have I mean that's that's the point that people don't seem to understand. It that you know, it's not guys sitting in a room saying, Well I think he's better, I think he's better. There is No, I mean that did that go on a million you know, many years ago? Yeah. Absolutely. There's set criteria I mean, it goes all the way down how far the criteria goes, and it, and it's a set criteria. There's no arguing, there's no debating. It's you know, you're just using the written cr- criteria, and you're breaking it down from there. So that's what people don't understand, you know. And I don't blame them because you know it, it changes. Seating, the seating uh, meeting is nothing what it used to be from many years ago, and yeah. each year it keeps, uh, it, it you know, it's changed somewhat. Even over from Alaska, uh, from a couple of years ago. I mean, la- you know, last year when we added the extra round and the extra kid in the weight class, that totally changed the way that the states were seated from previous years. So, you know, people aren't aware of it. They don't know every rule unless you know you're, you're a coach and maybe and you're in the know. So uh, it is hard for people to understand. You can't blame them. It does get confusing at times. Right. You know, it would it would be like common sense logic. How can that kid not be? The top seed he won the states last year, but again, if you follow the criteria, the set criteria that's written, you know, if you if you really looked at it and broke it down, you would understand more. Yeah, agree. All right, all right. I got I got one last question for everybody. Is this the question of the week, Kenny? Yeah. All right, then let me play this sounder. And now it is time for the segment that is sweeping the high school wrestling world. A segment so confounding, so creative, and so calculated that it often leaves our panel speechless or pleading the fifth. It's Ken Sarajan's Coach's Question of the Week. Okay, go. All right, we're going to go. Keeping with the policy of this week's show, Ryan's first Tommy's second, and uh, Donnie's third. And Kenny's tired. But, Did you hear that deep breath in there? <laughs> yeah, I am tired. What's, what's the final? His inhaler. Kenny needs his inhaler. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get the oxygen. What's the final you want to see, Ryan? Final that I want to see? That was the question. Uh, see, I let you go first, and this is how you pay me back. Come on. <laughs> 
but you just asked a question. Uh, I think the final I want to see is uh, Nick Babbitt against anybody on the other side. Oliveri, Mazio, or Beardoffel. Kyle is, is going to be a great semi against Babbitt. But the, the final I want to see is uh, Babbitt and Oliveri. Sounds like a good one. Tommy? I think I'll score 120. Donnie talked about the weight class just a moment ago. Um, I think that will be an interesting final. Like, Mancio's a two-time medalist. You have, you know, Donnie's kid, um, Howard, in the bottom bracket. You got Menino in the bottom bracket. So any of those guys and Mancio, I think that, that'll be a, uh, definitely a very exciting final. And Donnie? What final do I want to see? Anyone with a Bergen, ca- Bergen Catholic? Anyone, all, any, anyone against all my 13 kids in the final. <laughs> <laughs> Teddy, do you have one other one? Hey, yeah. one other one. I think 182 will be a good one. With 182 and, is a great uh, weight class. Ganser and possibly, you know, Donnie's, uh, uh, the Bergen Catholic kid, McKenzie. I think that would be a great match. Yep. You know, Actually, so. that was the one I was going to say. I, I either want 120 or 182 are the ones I want to see. But I like There's what I like what Ryan said. I think, I think those guys down there can do some nice things, too. There's a fun match at 82 in the first round. Uh, two former teammates, Queen of Peace, Queen of Peace, uh, Beam from St. Joe's and Pilot from DePaul. Both Queen of Peace guys that are wrestling first round against each other. That's interesting. There you go. All right, Ryan Burdett chipping in here. Kenny seems to have a man crush on you this week. But a guy that I have a man crush on from his past appearances here on the wrestling show, it is my pleasure to welcome in the proprietor of the Iron Horse Wrestling Club. He is Gary Mezzacapo. Gary, thanks for joining us here on the wrestling show. It's great to be back. It's, thank you very much for having me on, I think. And uh, <laughs> where you've been, you're supposedly going to call me up in the beginning of this season. I haven't heard from you until now. I, uh, Who were you guys? I blame you know, that on your presence. Temerity? What happened? <laughs> temerity. <laughs> yes. What happened? That, that's probably the way I should have introduced you, as the only man ever to use a word like temerity <laughs> on the wrestling show, the great Gary. Oh, and I, I got blame, my shag card and everything. Yeah, I blame <laughs> your lack of appearances on your press agent, Donnie Spataro, not doing a great job of getting you on the show. No, we went, Donnie went dark stick this year, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kenny. Now, we got Gary here. Gary has a great uh, in-depth knowledge of the statewide wrestling scene. How do you want to start this off with him? Well, the, the beauty of Gary is all you got to do is press the switch and he goes. Now, Gary, <laughs> where we want to start is we, we know the guys in Burton County, and, and I do want your opinion on them, but I really want you to tell us who the people, you know, our listening base is mostly North Jersey. Who are the people, who are the guys from around the state, and I'm not talking about the Pac Glories and those guys, who are the people out around the state that we should be looking for to be medal winners that might be upsets, and where do you see the tough head-to-heads down in Atlantic City from everything beyond Region 3? Give us your expertise. Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't I just start real early on, just throw out a few names that maybe people aren't thinking about, but, you know, 106 right off the top there, freshman Joey Oliveri out of Hanover Park, just as an aside, can Hanover Park put out more hammers at 106? They've had Cecil, Laval, and over and over, these kids, they just keep putting out these lightweights, and by the way, they're all Italian somehow. Um, I think Joey Oliveri is a hammer. He got the top seed down there. There's a kid out of uh, 100 and Central, Wade Unger, uh, not the Bergen Catholic under, but Wade, uh, Brett Unger, excuse me, at 100 Central. He's got the three seed, and the reason he's got the three seed is you get up your way. Nick Babin took him out early on this year, so Babin wound up with the second seed. But for kids out of your area, I'm, I'm looking at Unger probably coming out of the three seed. Um, I think probably the Unger Babin winner, I think you're looking at probably a finalist there. There's another kid out of Belvedere, Quinn Malachik, who happened to beat uh, Unger, or who did he beat? He won the... He beat... Who did he beat somebody in the semis, Donnie? Who am I thinking of? Nardone Malachik. from uh, Del Borne. Oh, he beat uh, Nardone from Del Borne, another super freshman up this way. Um, so that's probably what you're looking at there. I would say out of your area, Joey Oliveri, the kid to look out for. Uh, out of Hanover Park, 
moving up a little bit. Uh, you've already kind of kept me out of the Pat Glory stage, but if I could just, as a point of privilege, I think Pat Glory is just a phenomenal wrestler. He's a, he's a real testament to what these kids can do at some of these private schools and Catholic schools like Burton Catholic and stuff like that, where they take a lot of reviews because they, uh, we get superstars. Anybody could coach that team. Well, one of the most improved people I've ever seen is Pat Glory. One other kid was Nick Soriano, Burton Catholic. So it, it, I think it puts out the lie there that these kids aren't getting better and they're just arriving at these places as superstars. They're not, and they're getting much, much better. Um, so, I mean, just as a side, I think Pat Glory is a dominant wrestler in the state, has been for a while. Moving up to uh, 113, uh, they got the Menino boy down there at Gateway Regional. I believe he's the third seed out of 13. He's a kid that obviously we've heard about before, but he's all the way down there at the point at South Jersey. Um, you know, there's a kid sitting at the second seed that's robbed from 120 up your way from St. Joe's. I got to mention him, Sammy Alvarez. He was a hammer at 20. He's going to be tough to deal with at 13, down at 13. But uh, moving up a little bit, maybe skip up a bit if we could. Maybe up to 32. Uh, you got Nikki Ramo, another kid out of Hanover Park, one of the top kids in the country there, returning state champ. Up at 32, uh, he's the prohibitive favorite up there. It would, it would be an upset for anybody to beat him, but just as an aside, an interesting match could be his quarterfinal with probably the winner of Charlie Cunningham out of Seton Hall and Russell Benson out of Raritan, and I'm sure Donnie's familiar with Russell ben uh, Benson. Real tough kid. You know, if you get into a scrap with him, you might be in a little bit of trouble. But Nicky's throwing up points all over the place now, so I would have to think he's the prohibitive favorite. But another name maybe to think about coming out of there was out of uh, Howell, Kyle Slendor. I believe he was a state runner up last year. He's a senior with a mustache for some reason. So he's you know, coming out of the third seed. Uh, Point of personal privilege again, heavily biased. I like my kid Carmen Ferrante coming out of the sixth seed there. I think he's a potential finalist that nobody's thinking about. That's just my opinion, and I'm horribly biased as it comes to Carmen. So that gets us up to 32. Uh, anyone who want to pop in there? I'm losing my breath a little. Yeah, Gary, let me ask you. Let me ask you one quick question. Uh, uh, if if there was one number one seed in the state that did not win. Uh, state championship this year. Who would it be most surprising that it, it, what what weight class would it be most surprising if the number one seed didn't win? Oh, who, who, so are you asking me who's the most prohibitive favorite top seed? Correct. Okay, I would say Patrick Glory without a doubt. Okay, without a doubt, I think Patrick Glory is the best kid in the country. But I mean, he is so far. And it, obviously, I don't mean this to the second guy or anything like that, but the gap between one and two at Patrick Glory's weight is, is like no other gap in this state. I mean, it's, it's 10, 12 points of a gap. I think you'd have it's to a throw, major decision I gap. I think you'd have to show Shane Griffin in there, too. Well, you know, very good point. I think he's, I would say he's probably the second most prohibitive favorite. I guess you'd have to say his potential finalist is that kid, Ken Yard, coming out of Wall Township who's got a little bit of national trade, but very good point by Donnie there. Shane Griffith, who unfortunately probably gets overlooked enough because he was a freshman state champ, and he's kind of, oh, yeah, Shane Griffith. I believe Donnie finished in the finals this year. He's a four-time finalist, no? Correct. He could yeah. be a three-time state, three state champ, four-time finals. Yeah. I, 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 I just, got another you know, question for Harry. I'm going to flip the question that Corey asked you. I'm going to say, what weight class do you think any one of the top four or five guys could take the goal. Is there any weight class where, you know, you wouldn't be surprised if any of the top four or five won? I would say this. I would I'd say this. The kid I think that can come out of the lowest seed to be a state champ, which is kind of getting close to you, Kenny, there is I think Donnie's kid at 95, Cordenas, at, he's the eighth seed at 95, with the top seed being, and uh, forgive me, I'm not familiar with the boy, so I really don't know his name. This kid at Brian Martin, 95, Cordenas, he's dangerous, boy, and he's wrestled the national schedule, which leads me to something that, you know, we have to include this. You know, it's kind of like, hey, some of these Bergen Catholic kids, Del Barton kids are coming into the tournament with 10 losses. You don't want to wrestle these kids, though. You, they wrestled the national schedule. Catch a kid 
from Del Borden of Bergen Catholic on the back side in this tournament, and you're going to be out of the tournament. It, you know, so I think this kid Cardenas and the top seed at 95, it's, it is Brian Martin. Brian Martin from Williamstown. So it's kind of like, I wouldn't be surprised there. I also think, push the question a little bit more, one of the top seeds that I think are very vulnerable, I think 113 is a very vulnerable kid because I think 113 is always vulnerable because they're lightweights and they're very similar, but Anthony Clark, returning state champ, that's a really tough weight class. He's got, I believe, the Menino kid from Gateway sitting down there at the two seed. So, I mean, there's a lot of vulnerability with the lightweights there. Look at all those hammers at 106. I mean, any one of those kids can come out. Obviously, Nick Chaos could come out of that whole thing on top of the podium. There's just... There's just so many kids in the lightweights. You get to the upper weights, I think you separate the top seeds. I think there's a big distance between them. Um, and, you know, there's this kid out of war. He's the heavyweight, Fernandez. I believe he's like a seven seed. He's an underseeded wrestler, a six seed. Well, that's the most dangerous six seeds you're going to be out there. Because, I don't know, I can't think of the kid who's the top seed at heavyweight's name off the top of my head, but I know who this kid Fernandez is. Mm-hmm. Top seed is Flint from Compton Lake. And, you know, so, I mean, no offense to the kid or anything like that, but like I said, down in the lower weights, especially in Jersey over the last five, ten years, you can throw them all into, you know, a had these lightweights, who's going to come out? Anthony Court, you know, won it last year, but and he was in a tight match with this kid. Another thing, he's not the top C, but hey, is Robert, does anybody want to wrestle Robert Howard? I mean, Robert Howard knocked off the number one kid in the country this year. Right. So, and he's not the top, what is he, the third seed, I believe. So, I mean, there's just a fascinating, like, quarters almost. You're almost, like, who's going to get through the quarter? Sometimes your quarter might be harder than your semi. You know, it's because of these freshmen without a lot of criteria and stuff like that, but great records, you know, and you see all these kind of people that really don't know what they're talking about get on these forums and start bitching, I can't believe he's a regional champ and he got proceeded behind the kid at the third. You know, and people just don't quite understand it, obviously, and you're just trying to get the best two kids at the last match of the day, right? So. Yep. Hold on, hold on a second. Hey, Ryan, do you have any questions yep. for Gary? Let's give Ryan a shot. I, I would actually, uh, my question is going to lend towards seating as well, is who, who whether... Uh, it was to their advantage or disadvantage. Who in your, you know, in, in the Central Jersey or South Jersey got a seed that uh, maybe didn't, or you don't think fit them? Do I think he got screwed, or do I think he he, he benefited? Both. E- either either one, both. Well, I think I think I've already said it. I think the top seed at one ninety five. If I'm him, I'm a little pissed off that I got Cardenas looking down at me. If Cardenas gets there now, obviously, you know these are. High school kids, 16, 17 years old. So, what looks good on chalk doesn't always play through. But I've seen the kid rest one enough on a tough schedule, and he was also an 82 pounder early on this year. Moved up. So, I think if I'm the top seed at 95, I'm like, ah, and if I'm the top seed at heavyweight, and I'm like, you might I shouldn't be swearing. I'm like, ah, damn it, that kid from four, he's just sitting there, Fernandez, and you know, he's got a burr up his rear end right now because he didn't get the match with that Zach Del Vecchio down at section or at groups and blah, 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 blah. So that's, you know, quite interesting. Although, as an aside, we might be able to get that Del Vecchio Fernandez match at the uh, Iron Horse tournament in May. So we'll see what we can do on that. I like when Gary <laughs> says, uh, I shouldn't curse, and then fo- follows it up with, God damn. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, you got a question Tommy. for Gary? No, I mean, he just gave a great rundown. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he pretty much. <laughs> you know, I, I do want to echo something that Gary's sort of going at, and, and it's at the ends of the spectrum. 106 and 113, because they're so young, but so experienced now, anybody, and you're going to have all these 2-1 matches, it can turn on a, a reversal or it can turn on an escape. On the other end of the spectrum with the heavyweights, I think that's an open thing, like you were saying. Now, we saw the kid Flynn, and I thought he looked good. But you look at those other heavyweights, and you say, they're all legit. You never know what's going to happen in a tight match. Those tend to be, you know, somebody turns the wrong way, and you got a pin, and all of a sudden that bracket is screwed up. So I think the most, I, I think what Gary was saying, I guess I'm looking for affirmation from Gary, is, the places that end up being the most open are at the two ends of the spectrum of the weight classes. Gary? I, I think it's dead on. I think it's just the classic bell, right? I mean, it's fat in the middle, and at the, both ends it's pinched. Uh, but I, 
And now with this low end of it, it's pinched because these are all kids with these fantastic records. And generally speaking, they're all like got superstar resumes coming out of the rec leagues and all that. So, I mean, a kid like Joey Oliveri, you know, me and Kenny and us, we said, yeah, we've heard the name. Well, Joey Oliveri amongst his peers is probably a little superstar and stuff like that. And everybody saw Joey Oliveri coming for years. We just didn't necessarily. So, I mean, all those kids down there, they, they're talented and they're so close. There's a scramble there out of talent. Now, and without insulting anybody at the other end of the spectrum, it's more like who's going to catch the right kid at the right time or who can still breathe in the third overtime? Right. I mean, besides the Chaconis brothers, who I absolutely adore, Name me a couple heavyweight champs before them. Who were they? Well, and look, the kid from Riverdale two years ago who made it to the finals with him. Found a buy or something, but my point is, wasn't there a heavyweight state champ from Camden a couple years back, five years back? Yeah. Yes, yeah. You were, yes. What was his name? Williams? Oh, he almost forgot his sneakers. He had to run out. Yeah. Under the, back. Right, but, I mean, the point being, but I tell you what, you didn't forget who was the state champ of 106 in 19, or 2012. I believe it was Nick Soriano. You know what I mean? There's a different story yeah. there. There's a whole different storyline at that end of it. The other end of it's like, man, there a lot of great stories coming out of that every week class because there's a lot of like, Looks like there's a lot of kids coming out of South Jersey. There looks like there's a lot of family involved in the water and motions, you know, and stuff like that. But you're not seeing a lot of technique. You know, you're seeing a lot of kids that are saying, okay, I'm going to try to hook on a football next year or something like that. You know, it's kind of like the heavyweights in New Jersey are like, it's not Zach Ray out there every time or, you know, Tom Curl or something like that. It's mostly somebody that we're not going to know who they are. It's going to be a nice story, but, you know, we're going to remember the 106 founder because he's going for his second state title now. So. Yeah. Uh, it's true. Uh, Gary, what do you see as the state of uh, wrestling in New Jersey right now? Uh, I'm going to be perfectly honest what, with you. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be dead honest with you. I think about this often. I've had an opinion about this for about three or four years now. It hasn't changed much. I just first I say we're whistling past the graveyard, okay? And every time I do that, people are just oh, you're crazy, you know, the <laughs> you're talking about or whatever. Well, it's not about that. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's about okay. We're at the top of the weight classes. We're as good as anybody. We can go Jersey against Pennsylvania, New York, California, Ohio. We can do all that. Illinois crap. We can do all that. We get to certain sort of place. I'm sorry, and I know we got a coach, some coaches on the line here. We, we we have no depth. I mean, I'll say this, and, you know, I can't prove it, but there are going to be kids on the podium that couldn't make my backup team at Iron Horse. Okay? And that's not anybody in particular. It's just the state of what it is. Now, what do we complain about, though? Read the floors. We're complaining about seating. We're complaining about privates versus public and all that. What are you talking about? That's what we're complaining about. We're complaining about Bergen Catholic shouldn't be able to do that. Well, you don't have to wrestle, but that's what we're complaining about. So we're just we're moving the ball down the field. Oh, no, it's, I'm not that good because of that, because of them, because they have Josh McKenzie's at that school or whatever, you know. We're just whistling down the wrong thing, and so we're just enabling all these kids to be pretty good, not great anymore, you know. The great kids are coming out of Del Barton, and I use that because I just want to keep, you know, using Bergen, Catholic, and Donnie. But, you know, Del Barton's you know, right down the street from me and stuff like that. Well, Patrick Glory's turned into one of the best wrestlers in the damn country going there where everybody says, oh, you know, he walks in as a superstar. It's like they said to Joe Torrey, you know, what do you got to do? You got to write the lineup. Well, you know, you got to do more than that. But the kid got better every year. The kid's walking into Princeton right now. It's a dream of his. I mean, so we're wasting so much time and energy worrying about what Bergen Catholic is doing and what that, you know, what, in, in my, I can't understand how anybody could tell a parent where they could send their kid to school for whatever damn reason. That, it, it's beyond me. But then people get ridiculously excited about it. I heard Dean Colucci, his kids go to St. Peter's, they're friends of ours in the club, Donnie knows him well. He had, he had a post on, on a social forum. He was perfect. He goes, you know, what do you think? I'm sending my kids at this cost to St. Peter's for the wrestling team? Do you really think that? I mean, do you think we're paying this kind of money? And I've got three kids involved. And then we got college. Do you think we're doing that for wrestling? You know, and he laid it all out there. And it's like, you know, what do people really think? People think that, you know, Dave Bell is at some eighth grader's house right now? 
You know, saying Tony Bergen for Athletic or, or Damian Logan is at some kid's house saying, hey, come to St. Joe's. I mean, are they offering them cars and money and girls? I mean, it's just, you know, what's the end of the day? We're at state weekend, right, fellas? What difference is the school the kid goes to now? How can you complain about if the kid went to Bergen Catholic and it's not fair at this point? One thing we could do to help wall ourselves from all this angst, get rid of district team titles. Just get rid of district team titles, then you don't never have to talk about this again once the last school meet happens. Uh, well, Gary, now that you've alienated the rest of the wrestling show panel, well, I know that I have a conversation. Gary, district team or something, but, you know, I'm sorry. You got a sectional title, but really a district title? I mean, I went to two districts this year. I went to Patchak Valley, who runs a great district, by the way, Coach. It'd be a great place to have the Iron Horse tournament. And I went to Persian Catholic's district. I mean, there was some good wrestling going on, but I was at a district where, in the whole district, to be totally honest, there was one meaningful bout. I was at a district. One meaningful bout out of the whole tournament. You know? So I just, yeah. you know, I don't know. How do you, how do you align district? How about doing this real quick and then I'm done. 16 districts, four regions, top four from regions, 16 man state bracket. A 32 man state bracket is a joke. I'm sorry, coaches. It's a joke. We don't have 32 kids good enough to be at the state tournament in our state. We just don't. Yeah. Every other state has a 16 man bracket. We de emphasize the regions to a fairly well. What's the regions worth? A third of the kids at the regions go to states. Four out of 12 kids go to state. I'll take those odds, 33%. You gotta win two matches. You might be at the state tournament. Uh, let's, uh, uh, Tommy. What do you think? You're a coach. The whole there's a whole lot going on there. So, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of you know. I'd like to help you, but I was too busy. Stuff, you know, I was too busy uh, uh, editing, he, writing down where I have to edit out the yeah, curses. You say, what do I think? I mean, you can look at it from three, four different ways. You know, right. I mean, there's a, a wider range of way of looking at it. You know. I understand Gary's point, right? Once you get to the states, who cares? And that's what I've always felt. That, you know, other coaches said, "Oh, separate the parochials." No, you know what? What the best one thing I think is great about New Jersey wrestling is when you're in Atlantic City and you're a state champ, you're a state champ. There's nobody better than you at that weight class. Yeah. That's something said. You go to other states, you got you know a group one state champ, group two state champ. You know, it's watered down like our football is watered down. Right. In all honesty, so I do I do agree to that. You know, on the flip side, 16 kids, 32 kids, you know, eh, you know, it's tough as a head coach. You know, you, you like to see the kids, you know, get down there um, yep. and, and so on. I think it's almost like, you know, when you limit weight classes, people talk about cutting back weight classes. You know, it's tough to get kids out anyway and then trying to keep them out, trying to get them matches, stuff like that. So there's, there's a bunch of ways to look at it. But, um, well, there's absolutely of- another side, Coach. I see that. And, I know. And, the other, the other and by the I, way, as the a other, club owner, I've got a handful of kids that took fourth place in region. You're damn right I'm going to fight for every one of them because those are the rules. I would never take it away from any one of my kids to say, hey, dear, but my opinion is you're fourth place, you shouldn't go. That's bull. That's baloney. You know, the kid <laughs> yeah, no, did everything exactly, he was exactly, told to know, do. So don't get me wrong here. But, you know, it's uh, when you look at it like from the standpoint of, hey, we want to keep these kids, we want to keep growing the sport. You want the numbers to continue. You know, 32 is, is okay. But you know, does it backfire okay, at some point, Tommy? Does it backfire that it could, like you by lessening competition the in the long run, do we lose the best wrestlers? Shouldn't we still try to appeal to the best wrestlers and expect the, the, the lesser ones to raise to the best ones? If we appeal more to the median, we're going to lose the top. Well, to the and earlier. If we lose the top, hey, we lose the Gary, a question for you, Gary. The, I have a simple philosophy. The top will always rise. The one advantage of having more kids go is that actually it impacts, the, especially the younger kids who get to go, it impacts seeding in the future years. Because we're the okay. one sport where how you did in year one or two impacts where you end up in seeding in year three or four. But if you agree that the cream always rises to the top, it doesn't water down the sport. Because the cream is still going to get there, the 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 O'Malley Foca, the the Suriano, the Pac Glory, the the six kids we see at one twenty, they're going to end up there, and and so I don't see, and I'm not taking a position on it. Not, I'm just debating the issue you said of that we're watering down the sport. We, if you believe 
that our top two or three guys are our top two or three guys, they'll always be there. The, the rarity of an upset other than heavyweight is is not a problem. So I, I just don't see it from that point of view. And what is the difference? I, I, if you have 16 or 32, how many extra matches does the top seed have to win with this format? One. One. Okay, but point being is this, and Teddy, I take it as a great point criteria, previous year criteria, I'm a preacher of that. I tell these kids, hey, you know, that match is a much more important match than you think it is and stuff like that. So I'm all on board with you there. But can't we accomplish that in a couple rounds late in the regions instead? Almost like a super region set up again. I just think... Wow, yeah, don't give me super special. regions. <laughs> well, but we can establish that work here somewhere else. But isn't it special to make Atlantic City... Isn't it? And the less special we make it one day, that's going to come up back and bite us in the rear end because everybody's saying, what's the big deal? He made it to LA and said, he made it to LA. You know, so uh, here's another right. thing, which burns my bridges. Last year, there were five kids that took shit in the region that made it to the state tournament because of injury. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, yeah, listen, okay, that's not a crisis or anything, but hello? You took six in your region out of 12. Yeah. And you got to right. hey, maybe you get a chance and some kid bumps their head next thing you know, you win a match. Because the exception never pulls the rules. Yeah, but not- now you're, you're going to, to extreme exceptions. So I mean, stay oh, with I, the, I, I agree. Stay with the majority, Gary. Stay, with, stay the focus on where the meat really is. And the meat's at the top and the meat comes through. I agree. I, I, I agree. Listen, I wouldn't lead a march against it or anything like that. I just, I think we just need to keep creating the competition and the, that the, the, getting to Atlantic City, it's keep making it hard to do. I think it's good that it's hard, yeah. you know. And we are New Jersey. We are a single-class state championship, which gives us that benefit built in already. So back to your point there, Kenny, which now it makes a lot more. We're going to have the cream, but we're also going to have that. I'm not saying that everybody that's not the greatest wrestler in our state is not a good wrestler. That's really good. There's hands for Division One wrestlers out there. So, Harry, I don't you forget? I grew up in an era where only we had four regions. Yep. We had eight districts for every region, and what happened was only number one went from district to region. Only number one went from region to, to Asbury Park. So I I lived in that era, and, and I was the guy who lost to the kid who finished third in the state by one point, and I, and I stayed home. So and not in the, I lost to him earlier in the year, but the point is still, I felt that I had beaten most of the other guys in the region, and I stayed home. So, you know, what do you do? That was look. life back. Right. I, I you got it? Again, okay, I ahead, the same in grace is that we're single class, which is, as long as we're single class, Kenny, I think you would agree with that, all the guys, as long as we can stay single class, we're way ahead of the game. It's that we right. start chipping away at that. I, we concern at that. I'm not as concerned about the fourth place kid at the region. Listen, I, I don't want to come off as some jerk like that's being, trying not to include kids. I'm trying to. It's just, you know, I just look at it just slightly different way. You know, like I said, I'm not going to go to war over anything like that. It's just that, the next step is the fifth place kid. So it's kind of, you know, that's all. Ryan, do you have anything? No, I did. Just, just a, well, one thing quick to add in. I would just think that, the, unfortunately, the, mo- the, the most exciting, as a fan, I'll speak not as a coach, but as a fan, the most exciting round of the regions kind of got eliminated as uh, the third, fourth place match to yeah. decide who goes to Atlantic City is no longer meaningful. And I know the round before that becomes meaningful, but the matches are not as high quality. So although you're getting two matches on, you know, you have two matches side by side and they're deciding who's going to be in that third, fourth, that those matches are not as highly competitive as the third and fourth were. And, you know, again, not speaking as a coach, but as a fan, I enjoyed the third, fourth place matches probably the most of anything leading up to AC um, during the year. I think that's a great point. You're right. Gary Bezicapa, always a pleasure to have you here on the wrestling show. You're you know, the good thing this is a TV, people would know what I look like, and like <laughs> guys like Kenny be coming after me. Yeah, but let me tell you this. Your, your presence... <laughs> Harry the Dick Vitale of the wrestling show. <laughs> yes. Your, your opinions are appreciated. Your passion is appreciated. And whether uh, we agree with all of your points or disagree with some and agree with other ones, 
It comes from an informed place. You know what you're talking about, and you have your you have your own uh, you know the set of rules that that you'd like to see go by. And listen, I can appreciate that. You love the sport of wrestling, and we love to have you on the wrestling show. All right, we have taken you to the cusp of Atlantic City, the drive down the Parkway, the wrestling show out of gas for this edition. We will see you next week to wrap it all up on the wrestling show. Follow the leader.